Okay, so by request, we're going to graph by completing the square of this quadratic, which is f at x is 2x squared plus 10x plus 1. I was asked to do one where the coefficient of x is odd, and when I divide out the 2, it will be odd. You'll see in a second. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to divide out the 2 so that we've got no coefficient in front of x squared. So I've got 2 times x squared plus 5x and that one we can just leave out. So I'll close off the bracket and we've got a plus one over here. If you're unsure whether or not you've got this right, you can just go the other way by multiplying it out. Two times x squared is two x squared and two times five x is 10 x. So this line has to be equal to the previous line in all cases. What we want to do now is add the magic number and that means the number that will create a perfect square inside of our brackets. So we'll just copy it out and leave space for the number we're going to add. And remember, immediately after subtract. So what we need to do is find a number that is exactly half of that squared. So the coefficient of x is a 5. So let me just show you on a separate sheet here. We've got a 5. And we want to divide that by 2. I'm going to just write that as 5 over 2 and then we want to square that. So five over two squared is, remember you square the top and the bottom. This exponent applies to both the numerator and the denominator. So that is 25 over four. So 25 over four is the number that I must add to x squared plus five x to make a perfect square. And let me just remind you the criteria is this is a perfect square if half of this number squared gives you that number. Half of this number is 5 over 2, and 5 over 2 squared is 25 over 4. So I want 25 over 4. Okay, so we're going to add 25 over 4, but that immediately changes the value of this equation, so I'm going to also subtract 25 over 4. Now to clean things up, I want nothing but my perfect square inside these brackets, so I'm going to pull the 25 over 4 out. That is the negative 25 over 4. However, by virtue of being inside these brackets, it's being multiplied by 2. So to pull it out, I must multiply it by 2. So my next line, f at x is 2x squared plus 5x plus 25 over 4. And to get this out, I'm going to multiply it by 2. So that's negative 50 over 4. Now I've got a perfect square in here. We factor a perfect square by writing down half of this half of this coefficient, which is, of course, also the square root of that coefficient. In that case, it's just 5 over 2. Now, if you want to know why that works, it's really best to understand these backwards. It works because if you multiply that out, you get the previous line. And if those lines are equal, then what you're doing is correct. Okay. Now, the numbers over here, I've got negative 50 over 4 plus 1, and 1 is 4 over 4, so that's negative 50 over 4 plus 4 over 4. And then I'm going to simplify this aside, minus 50 plus 4 over 4. which is minus 23 over 2, or 11 and a half. So there you have it. 
To recap, we started with 2x squared plus 10x plus 1. We divided the 2 out of each of these terms to clean this up and remove the coefficient of x squared. And then we added this carefully chosen number, which we referred to as the magic number, which makes this a perfect square. And remember the criteria is simple. Just take this number, divide it by 2, and then square the result. Half of 5 is 5 over 2, and when you square that, you get 25 over 4. Whatever you add, you must immediately after subtract to keep the equation balanced. We remove that fourth term from the brackets so that we've got nothing but our perfect square, which can be factored this way. You know you factored it correctly if you try on a separate sheet of paper multiplying it out, and you get the previous line. Now that we're done, let's interpret this. We have a vertex where x is negative 5 over 2 and y is negative 11.5. And remember, this can be a little bit tricky when you first see it. Whatever's inside of here is backwards with reference to the, the location of the x value of your vertex. You can fully understand that when we get into transformations and when you look at it as an inverse, it becomes obvious as to why. For now, just if you just remember that for now and, and believe that you'll understand it fully later, that would be acceptable. So then to sketch this real quick, we'll go to negative 5 over 2, which is negative 2.5, negative 11.5, and then sketch your graph. So that's negative 2.5, that's negative 11.5, that's the location of the vertex. And for one more point here, and if we go to the top, that makes it easiest. If x is 0, just erase both of these terms, and you're left with a 1. So in Lagrange notation, that is f at 0 is equal to 1. And what I did there, I just made x 0 in both of these terms, gave us a 1. Which gives us this point here. You know that it's fully symmetrical and your curve is going to look about like that. Okay, I'll leave that there for a second if you want to pause that to copy that out.